what's good everybody welcome back to my channel if you knew what do you do so today we're gonna be doing something new this is my first chit chat get ready with me i'm so excited y'all already know i've been wanting to do this for a minute but i just be getting kind of nervous number one that my makeup won't come out right and number two i do want to like eventually talk directly without a voiceover it's just that i don't know how to multitask um but we're gonna get there we're gonna get there definitely comment down below if y'all end up enjoying this type of video because i definitely want to do more of these and also give me some more topics to talk about um but anyways for today's chit chat i want to discuss my celibacy journey it's been a little over two years now um, and five things that I have learned along the way. Just a disclaimer, yes, I am a Christian and I do believe in God 100%. But honestly, these are general lessons I found that come with celibacy, whether you believe in God or not. So if you're not a believer, don't click off this video because you can definitely benefit from this too. So we got five lessons that I've learned on my celibacy journey. Let's get into it. The first lesson I have is that you learn so much about yourself and your relationship with God grows so much stronger. I decided to go abstinent in January of 2021. And before I even get into this, actually, I want to... um give my definitions on abstinence and celibacy i know it's a whole bunch of different like definitions out there or whatever woo -doo -woo -doo -woo. but for me abstinence is just abstaining from sex for a certain amount of time for like religious or non-religious reasons like you're just abstaining and then celibacy is waiting until marriage or you have a covenant with god and you're waiting until marriage so that's what I'm speaking on when I say abstinence and celibacy. So yeah, January 2021, I decided to go abstinent. I wasn't celibate just yet, okay? I still had one foot at the door just in case I wanted to spin the block. But I did eventually go celibate. And when I tell y'all, I learned so much about myself this year. And I grew so much closer to God. I leveled up so much mentally is crazy. Like, after I graduated college is really when I started to ask myself questions like, okay, so who am I? you know who is Christina what are her likes and dislikes hobbies what career path do I want to take and when you're in your single season especially um, you're going on solo dates trips you're reading books you just learn so much about yourself and who God says you are because you don't have any distractions you have way more time to spend with just yourself now, of course, your husband is not going to be a distraction or anything like that. He's definitely going to add value to your life. But you first have to get in tune with yourself and figure out who you are. The second lesson I learned is that your type or your taste in men completely changes. Um, I know for a lot of women, or at least myself anyways, went through a phase of being attracted to certain types of guys, um, maybe like drug dealers, scammers, possibly in and out of jail, or just like, a super hood mentality but once I graduated high school and I started to really think about my future I realized like um okay there's literally no future with these types of men and if you think you're gonna be the one to change him sis then I'ma just pray for the both of you I know it's exceptions to the rule but for the most part a man will only change his life for the better if he truly wants that for himself or if he finds God not because he's so in love with you and afraid to lose you um, I've been there, done that, didn't work. There's some men out here that do change for their women in that way, but it's very rare. Also, I'm sorry if I'm up on the mic too much. I'm going to try to back up so y'all don't hear like that. So yeah, I'm going to try to fix that. But yes, one thing about me, I've always been goal-driven. I always knew I wanted to create my version of success and make something of myself. And I want the same thing for my husband. So I knew I wasn't going to get that playing Bonnie and Clyde. Absolutely not. Once God started to really heal me, he began to show me the qualities of a truly healed and whole man. Somebody that's respectful, kind, loving masculine but in a gentle way he not calling you out your name or tossing you around like none of that like it's the greatest thing <laughs> so yeah when you're celibate and working on yourself i truly believe that eventually you will attract your equal 
who is headed in the same direction as you, like a whole grown man. So my third lesson pretty much follows up on my second. Once you go celibate, your tolerance for BS pretty much goes out of the window. Discernment becomes so much stronger when it comes to talking to guys and you're able to sniff out the bad ones a lot quicker. And the reason is because you start thinking with the right thing up there and not miss thing down there. Y'all already know what I'm talking about. Sex has the potential to cloud your head up and you end up missing all of them red flags. So because you don't have a soul tie with this person and they don't have access to you in that kind of way, um, you're able to think with a clear mind and actually listen to and process what this person is telling you as well as their actions. And then you can decide, okay, well, this is something I can deal with or no, it's time for me to walk away respectfully. And if you do have to walk away, it may still hurt, but not on a super deep level because you haven't formed a soul tie with that person. The fourth benefit to celibacy is that your healing process happens much quicker and much more efficiently. Um, a lot of us men and women have been bamboozled into thinking that in order to get over your ex, you got to hop on the next or you got to get a little roster going. But I've learned when you do this, you're literally just prolonging your healing journey or even going backwards. You're not healing. You're bringing all that hurt to the next person and the next person and forming more unnecessary soul ties if you're sleeping with them. And if you actually end up meeting somebody that's done the work on themselves and healed, they will literally run the other way if you still show a lot of signs that you haven't healed. So a little bit about my healing journey. I got my heart broken way back in 2018 and completely lost all desire for a relationship after that. Like I just became hyper focused on school, work and the gym. That's how I dealt with the trauma. Um, of course, I had some partners since then, like nothing crazy. But love was like completely out of the question. 2021 is when I really started to seek God for myself and fall in love with him. But even then, my heart was still closed off to men. Um, but come 2022, honey, 2022 is when God really began to heal my heart. And he reignited my desire for love and companionship, you know, because I had lost that. And it's human nature for us to want love and relationships and not just with spouses, but family and friends as well. God said in Genesis 2.18 that it is not good for man to be alone. But in order to have healthy relationships with other people, we first have to be healed within ourselves. So that way you can add value to somebody else's life rather than taking away from it. And you know, one more thing when it comes to healing, nobody really talks about how scary the idea of a healthy relationship is after being hurt in the past. Like, let's talk about it. It's like you want to let your guard down and be open to love again. But at the same time, you're so afraid of this person not being solid, which can lead to self-sabotage or going back into toxic habits like yeah let's talk about it nobody will ever be a hundred percent healed and whole and that's just facts so it takes some vulnerability for relationships to work and it's something that you really just have to take to god like let him know i can't heal off of my own strength i need you to step in and restore my heart so that I can show up and love this person properly and receive love properly. But yeah, so to wrap up this lesson though, celibacy allows you to heal more efficiently because number one, you're focused on yourself and God. If you believe in God, that should be your first priority. And number two, you aren't creating soul ties with other people, which halts your healing journey. Okay, so boom, the last lesson of celibacy is kind of common sense, but it's actually often overlooked. So I just wanted to go ahead and include it. Um, when you're celibate, you do not have to worry about unplanned pregnancies or STDs. I think that the way society has diminished the significance of giving your body away to another person is pretty sad to be honest and this is coming from a person that has been in the world and has had those same thoughts so 
I'm definitely not coming after nobody specific when I say this. But now I've realized, you know, as I've grown on my walk with God, it's like if you can't see yourself marrying this person or having a baby with them, then you should not be sleeping with them because those 15 minutes of fun you was going for can end up costing you 18 plus years of parental duties or you can end up with a disease that there is no medication for. Oh, I know it's probably some people thinking like, okay, well, your husband can come home and give you an STD too, or your husband can have a baby on you. Marriage is just a piece of paper, la da da da. But I'm talking about a healthy marriage, which I know a lot of people do not believe in these days, but that's a whole nother video. Long story short, yes, I still believe that healthy marriages exist because that's what God told me he had for me. And I know some people may not believe in God, but at the end of the day, he hasn't not come through for me on a promise yet. Everything that God has promised me has come to pass. And if it was something that I ended up not getting because it was what I wanted and not what God wanted, that was for my protection or it was because he had something better for me or that thing is still in progress so it's like why would i not believe him for a faithful loving husband like that's crazy but yeah let me wrap up this last lesson because i'm kind of getting off topic um when you're celibate and you wait on the true love of your life you will not have to worry about pregnancies or stds or should i say the chances are greatly reduced for those who just want to think the worst like oh gosh so yeah that's my five lessons that i've learned while being celibate um i know in today's society it's a lot of pressure on women to feel like you have to put out before marriage because that's all men want la da 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 but i truly believe that at the end of the day the man that is meant for you or the man that god has for you will wait period falling in love with somebody begins in the mind for sure and sex should only be a bonus but i know in today's times that's very backwards but in order to find this person you have to still believe that they exist ladies we have to leave the all niggas ain't shit mentality in 2022 i know that the pool of good men are looking a little slim these days trust and believe i know but you can't let that discourage you from thinking that your person isn't out there so you have to continue to do the work on yourself and eventually you will attract your forever person and that's on period y'all please feel free to comment down below anything you felt like you resonated with or maybe something that you didn't agree with because i know it's very out of the ordinary to practice celibacy these days um so yeah and also if y'all like this video and want me to do some more topics then y'all let me know but I love y'all so much and I'll see y'all in my next video. Filled up